Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm really excited to share a sneak peek of a brand new die that we have coming for the next Essentials by Ellen release. It's called an envelope slider and we actually created it in two different sizes and you can certainly use it traditionally to make little tiny envelopes to embellish your card fronts. But this die set has an interactive feature built right into it. It's got a little slit and as you can see here, I have a piece of cardstock that was cut to the width of the slit and it can slide in and out easily. Now to show you how this works, I'm going to take the die cut uh, envelope and go ahead and position it where it's going to end up on my finished card. And this is a panel that will get mounted. It's just a quarter sheet of cardstock, A2 size, that'll get mounted to a base card. And I'm going to trace that opening on the envelope through to that front panel and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And I'm just using a Tim Holtz ruler, which has a nice metal edge there. And my X-Acto knife will help me um, cut that slit. And it doesn't have to be pretty or perfect, but it does need to be in um, the exact same position where the envelope slit is going to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the ends of that so I can pop that piece out. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's gonna be hidden, but I do need to make it the same size and in that same spot. Now I'm gonna take the mini envelope here and I'm just gonna use a straight edge ruler to crease those fold lines. Now normally if I die cut it from text weight paper, I can just do that with my fingertips, but the heavier weight of the cardstock, it's kind of hard with that slit there to come in and get that uh, folded nicely because it is so tiny. So the straight edge of a ruler is just going to help me make sure that I'm creasing that fold line there where it needs to go. And once I have all of those little flaps uh, properly creased there with the straight edge of my ruler, I can go ahead and take my Teflon bone folder and reinforce those crease lines nicely. Because it is a heavier weight, you really want to um, do that to get a nice crisp fold there. Um, with text white paper, you don't have to worry about it too much. You can just do it with your fingers. So now I'm going to take my envelope and make sure that it's in the right spot and my piece can slide through both openings on the panel and on the envelope. And I just wanted to test it and make sure that it will actually fit and slide properly. So now I'm going to go ahead and stamp these. And I already lined up my stamps and stamped a whole bunch of them so they're ready to go anytime I want to make one of these. So that's kind of a good tip for mass production or anytime you need a last minute card and you want it to have a, a fun feature like that. Get those strips already ready to go and have them uh, stored somewhere handy. So now I've already taken my panel and I've mounted my envelope there into position and I'm just testing where this strip needs to get trimmed down so that it will fit within the confines behind this panel and it will slide up and down properly. I'm going to take some foam tape here and create a channel. This is a slider channel and I'm just cutting the strips of foam tape uh, thin enough and mounting them just enough uh, far outside the lines of that strip so that I have some clearance there. And you'll see why as I continue to mount these strips. So I'm going to take another one and put it at the bottom. And this is going to create a stop gap at the bottom so that that strip doesn't fall out the bottom of the card. Um, I mean, you could, you could not worry about that, but I don't want it falling out. So I'll just go ahead and put that stop gap there of foam tape. Now, because this panel is going to be elevated due to the foam tape, I need to get the perimeter also prepped with some more foam tape all around the edges so that it's all equally level all the way around. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle around the whole outer edge and get my strips there. And as you can see, I'm just double checking to make sure that everything is uh, functioning properly here when the envelope is closed that's where that's gonna go and I just need to determine where I how far I want that slit um, to be marked so that when you pull that up what gets exposed and then I'm gonna create a little stop gap out of just some scrap cardstock this will never be seen but I just need to put it there where that pencil line is so that will stop that piece from coming completely out of the envelope. I'm going to trim off just a little bit here and you can see it's a little bit wider than my strip of cardstock. I'm just getting that excess adhesive off because I don't want anything impeding how well it moves inside and I'm just checking it to make sure that it comes up where it should and then it will come down to that position and then I'll trim off the excess off the bottom 
and I may need to test again to make sure the top edge is as short or as tall as it needs to be to slide up and down. Now I wanted it to be hidden completely like if I wanted to close the envelope so I'm going to trim off a little bit more and this is one of those things you kind of have to determine how long your message is and how this piece, uh, how long this piece needs to be in order to make the slider effect function the way you want it to. So now I'm going to punch a hole in this. I wanted to put some cord here so that it's easier for the person opening it to get a hold of it to slide it up and down. So a little bit of a, a grip there is necessary. So I just thought cord would be a pretty way to do it. And I just added some of that yummy Mayart gold cording there. And now it's time to mount this piece. And I'm just going to pull away a portion of the liner paper because I want to make sure that as I'm putting it down onto my card front, I'm not impeding the movement of that slider piece and I'm getting the whole thing mounted on straight because if I get it mounted on incorrectly and I have all that adhesive exposed, it'll be a heck of a time getting it apart in order to reposition it. So it looks like I've got it on there nice and nothing is impeding the movement of my slider and I can go ahead and remove the liner tape from all the rest of those foam pieces and press everything firmly in place and it will just be permanently mounted now to the card front. At this point, it's like, okay, it's now or nothing. <laughs> now or never. <laughs> so now I'll get some more of that uh, liner removed. I'm just going around the perimeter and using my tweezers to get a hold of it because it's kind of tricky to get in there with your fingers, especially if you don't have long nails like me. <laughs> so I'll finish mounting all that completely. And there you can see how nicely flush that is. And then I'm gonna seal the envelope bottom flap there by adding a little bit of glue with a fine tip applicator. And just press that into place. And to weight it down so that it doesn't uh, pop up on me while it's drying, I'm just gonna take some acrylic blocks and pile a, sta a little stack of those on top and let that glue set up. So we'll let, let that have some uh, dry time there and then we'll come back and do whatever other embellishments we want to do and test that the slider function is working as it should. And it is, it's pretty easy. Once you know the formula and the size of that piece, you can make a whole bunch of these um, pretty quickly. So there you go, it's a fun interactive card. I love the two different sizes of the dies and you can experiment with your own handwriting or other stamps that fit inside images or words. It is such a fun card to make and to send. I have more still shots and details available at the Classroom blog and look for this new release coming soon to ellenhudson.com. Thanks for watching.